Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we have a treat for you. I'm with Ken Nagel. Ken, good to see you. Good to see you. And this is, uh, you're known for your 50s and 60s yeah. cars, but this is quite the Chevrolet. What do we have for him today? Well, we have a 1970 LS6, which is a 454 cubic inch and 450, some will say higher to 500 horsepower. It's also a four speed and it's also a convertible which they only made 18 of entirely that year. So it gets into that one of category. I love this car. So we love the muscle cars on the channel. Ken, step right alongside me. You've had this one since 2014. Right. And that's the big dog Chevy. Big dog. So what made you say, or it was just that it, you loved it? I mean, the color combination is fantastic. I love blue cars, the white stripes. Well, the, the rarity of it, number one, is I've been trying to, in the uh, latter years here, cars that become available or what I've been purchasing are, as I say, I try to buy one ofs. And one ofs, I don't mean one of uh, one of one all the time, but I don't want one of a million. And uh, this falls into that category because of what it is. And again, being the four speed, the convertible, etc., cetera, uh, just in the uh, LS6 just puts it into that category and the, uh, the workmanship that gone into the restoration on this car. So now, people know you collect cars. Do they contact you and say this something like this is coming up, or how does this happen? Well, this here I found in a, again, I found in the, this came out of a Mecham auction in Indianapolis in, in 2014, and, but with the LS6s, there's a lot of clones out there, and you have to be very careful when you uh, are going to purchase an LS6 that it is a true car. And uh, a couple of friends of mine who were at the auction, I did not go to the auction, but a couple of friends of mine who were there uh, went down and checked the car out. Initially, they said, no, it's a clone, and don't worry, you know, we, we're not interested in buying that. And uh, when they got there and, and did the uh, check on the car, in turn, it had all the documentation of being a true LS6 with, uh, with the build sheet and everything else uh, regarding this car. They called me and uh, we in turn went after uh, uh, trying to buy the car and we were fortunate enough to do that. So this car was built in Van Nuys, California and was shipped to a dealership in, in uh, Wascom, Texas called the Hewitt, Hewlett uh, Chevrolet dealership there and was sold in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, which I guess is right across the border from Wascom. And in uh, 2000, the year 2000, a gentleman by the name of Buddy Heron ended up uh, finding this car and also at the same time was found at the build sheet on this car. Again, trying to verify to make sure it was the correct and it was a true LS6, he had, he sent those build sheets out to conservators uh, to make sure that the, this was the correct, that it was a true LS6. And of course it was, it did a lot of forensic testing on it, etc. Let's open this trunk and okay. get a little bit of... This car also, we have written documentation on this car and verified by Mark Meekums, who's the president of the Chevelle Association, that it was a uh, LS6, and also by Rick Nelson, who's another authority on LS6s down in Pleasant Plains, uh, Illinois. In fact, uh, this car was at Rick's place from May through July of this year, just in turn tweaking the car on minor cosmetics and things like that that it needed to have to bring it more up to a uh, the perfection car that we want. You know, it's funny you say that, Ken, because, uh, give me one second, it does. With you, you don't have what I would, you're, you're a car collector's collector. I mean, right. people who are car collectors come to see your collection. Right. What made you, in your head, be like this? Well, I, I don't know. I just relate to these cars. I enjoy them. I can't say that I'm an authority on cars by any means. Uh, I'm not a, a gearhead where I know how to take them apart or do any of that, but uh, I enjoy them. I came up in the era of the 50s and 60s when that's cars were the in thing and uh, I just en enjoy them. That's basically it. I, I don't buy them to flip them. I've only sold a couple cars in the 30 years that I've uh, had uh, classic cars. Uh, I buy them because I like them. So uh, 
uh, and I want them to be as correct as they possibly can. And uh, so that's what I get now, out of it. Now let's stay on that. So you want them as correct as possible can. Now, yeah. I, first of all, I love that because I look for mm -hmm. the unique just mm -hmm. like you do. And, mm -hmm. and I l literally will we'll spend mm -hmm. more time with Ken's collection another day. But this is just absolutely fantastic. Let me show the interior of this one. Um, you know, there's a certain level of people that love cars. And then there's the level of people who say it just really needs to be factory showroom new mm -hmm. and you're turning back the clock when you see this car and that's the best part about this is when you see a car like this you know you're just going right back to 1970 and it gives you that feeling again and that's the wonderful thing about this is that when you do that it just brings you straight back Wonderful, wonderful memory of this one. Okay, so did I hear you correctly? You weren't there to purchase it. No, I was not there. I, I have two friends that, that really know muscle cars. Uh, uh, Steve Bimby is uh, one of them, and the other is Tom Dietz, and they happen to be at the show and no muscle cars. Steve is an expert in that area and uh, uh, deals in Chevelles, etc. They basically just bought the car for me, uh, is what they did. And uh, But they verified it and were satisfied that it was a true LSX. And that's really what I want. I don't want any clones or uh, wannabes. No <laughs> I, tributes. I want a real mistake. Real McCoy. A real and that's McCoy. What this was. So what was your reaction when it came home? Well, I was in, in awe and just felt very uh, lucky to, uh, number one, is to have owned, uh, to be the new owner of this car because it is a rare car. And again, as I said before, that's what I'm trying to do is get uh, cars that are the one-ofs somewhat. And you, you and drive your cars. It. Well, I, I do somewhat. We live in the country here, as you can see, but uh, we don't drive them to the Dairy Queen. No, we do not. None of them are licensed. Uh, but we do exercise them. We do have an, a, a, an exhaust system in the in the garage that we use, like a gas station or a mechanic's garage would use to uh, start the cars in place and run them that way. But it's to drive them around every day. I do not do that. Yeah, no, no not an everyday driver. No, of I'm course. not an everyday driver. Well, no. well what uh, is the reaction when you've had this on the road? Oh, people are in awe of it, number one, is because, uh, again, you, you can find these cars, but uh, they are rare. But the other part is LS6, as many of them are, are hard tops, okay, and a lot of them will be automatics. But when you get to the convertible four speed, again, you just narrowed it down to uh, uh, 18. <laughs> 18. Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes people say, Lou, do you feel like lucky or blessed? Absolutely. And this is one of those cars where, I mean, you know, growing up, you, you hear about a car like this. You know, there's your, let's see if I can get that, your Muncie Rock Crusher. Right, M22. The Rock <laughs> Crusher. Sure. That's the best name for a yeah, shifter right. yeah, yeah, yeah. of any shifter ever. It's a rock crusher. Let's take a look under the hood and show the feature okay. attraction, shall we? We'll take off our hood pins. It's good to have friends who know exactly how to help you like that. And we have the sun just right. As I said before, this car here was at uh, Rick Nelson's for over three months just tweaking the various things in here and uh, I do have a, a complete detailed pictures taken etc listing up everything every nut and bolt that he in turn would have changed on this on this car that it is period correct and uh, so from that aspect of it I feel very comfortable with what in turn uh, he did whether he was plating this here rather than the paint that was on it, it uh, everything Painting wise, uh, pose wise, uh, nut and bolt wise is correct on this car. <laughs> it's a brand new car. Not only that, but you mentioned something and I'm just noticing it now. You mentioned to me, you said this car came out of California. Yes. And uh -huh. that's the smog pump. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Holy mm -hmm. cow. Yeah. Look at the period correct hoses and. Ah, yes. We'll just take a moment here. Now, when 
important tag. Might be able to get that a little bit better this way. Uh, there we go. For all of you who might be thinking, nah, I don't that. Look at this. I mean, even the exhaust manifold mm -hmm. is perfect. Mm -hmm. Your smog pump coming around. Wow. Wow. And then you've got your your opening there. Yep. I always thought it was kind of interesting. You've got this, this here, mm -hmm. which connects to this. Right, right. And then you still have this the air breather over there. The air breather yeah. over there just for just, just for grins. <laughs> yeah. You've got the Chevrolet team emblem there. Like so. There's your smog pump going in, which usually got discarded. <laughs> wow, okay. Let's Noted idle. Shut the hood for just a moment. <coughs> Let's show how that cowl induction works. It'll, it'll open up when they shut it off. All right, it'll open up when we shut it off. Okay. All right, we'll shut it down. But keep it running. Keep it running. Come on out. We'll just listen to it. It's just warming up. It's just warming up. If people like what they see, subscribe to the channel, hit the yep. bell, you can see them all. Ken, what a great car. Thanks for having me out. Wonderful time with you. You're welcome. Happy to be a part of it. <laughs>